All right, so I'm going to make a video about future proofing. Um, future proofing bases generally build up and not out. Um, a bad habit I've seen a lot of new people develop right off the bat is building out and not up. So this game has a lot of verticality. You can go real, real high up. You need to really build towards that. And um, ideally, hopefully this video will help you understand that concept a little bit better. So before you can even really start building a base to future proof, you'll need your logistics one, right? Um, and the best you're gonna be able to get for the most part is 60 resources per minute. So how you're gonna wanna work initially is have one row of two, because each smelter does 30, so it's 60. And then you can have it run out. And then right beforehand, uh, you can put a splitter, because the idea of future proofing is you're building up. So if you're building up, uh, you're going to start off with your basic resources like iron plates and rods. But then, you know, rods turn into screws and then you need screws and iron plates to make reinforced plates. So that's going to be a different layer for each resource. And um, the I ideal situation here, especially once you get better and better miners, you're going to be able to get more and more stuff and then you're going to want to balance load your outgoing resources, especially to feed different floors for different things. So for example, this floor right here will be for iron plates and the next floor up will be for iron rods. And so that's why you balance load here, send 50% of it that way, 50% of it that way. Or if let's say if you have two miners, you can have one miner go here and the other miner go there. And then if you have three, then you're gonna have to mess with balance loading to get the three onto two separate ones. There's a bunch of different things to consider but let's let me not get ahead of myself so um putting the splitter here balance loads it so that's uh to be a pretty important term to understand and that just means that it splits the load 50 50 so no matter what in the end each one of these belts is going to get the same amount and then each one does 30 obviously and then once they're done they're going to hit these belts and then go up to the next floor now you're going to generally want to put it in a corner somewhere or if not in the corner offset it in because you can put, you know, re you can put like uh, reinforcements for the floor if you want it to look cool. Uh, I personally don't care about it looking cool too much. I like my factories being very efficient. Um, and this game will want to waste your time. So, you know, do it at your own discretion. So, I, sp I, I split the load. You know, 30-30, 30-30. That one has 120 coming out of it. Now... If you get a faster miner like MK2, I think it goes up to 240 afterwards. So what you can do is you can delete these two and then put two more and then put two more. And then you just redo the route all the way back up. That's a very easy adjustment that you prepared for, see, because you can build the smelters all the way out to here. So now that you kind of understand the smelter situation, hopefully that makes sense. I'm going to keep saying hopefully that makes sense because <laughs> I just assume I don't ever explain anything well. Um, so I'm going to run over here. Oh, you know what? Sorry. I just walked right past this. Early on, you're going to need to get up to the second floor, and this ugly ramp situation is more or less the best you can do. Um, and the reason why I would recommend doing it this way is just because it's, it's all about getting up. Some, some people, you'll see them have a ramp further out and then come up. But as you build vertically, you'll need to adjust for it vertically. This right here was a little bit of, mis of a mistake. You want to offset your ramps out like this because then you won't be able to build the next um, vertical conveyor because there'll be a ramp in the way. So um, ignore this one, pretend it comes up here and then it goes up that way. So anyways, back to the iron plates. So this floor will only be for iron plates. As it comes out of the, the vertical conveyor, you want to hit it into this box so then it can have a saturation value. So for example, if it's coming out of here at 30, it's going to come into here. And then as soon as your factory kind of saturates a little bit, everything's going to back up, then this is going to back up. And then as soon as you yank, yoink up a bunch of plates somewhere, this can get back to work, but it'll get the maximum amount that the belt can take out of the box, at least for a while. So that it's kind of nice in a uh, future situation, but generally at those points it doesn't matter. It's just uh, it's just pleasant. So 
Now they're going to come out of there, and again, you're creating another box, or sorry, excuse me, another splitter for uh, balance loading. Now in this case, it might not be necessary. You can just have one long row of conveyors for it. Um, but sometimes, you know, if you're in the future, if you get really, really fast conveyors and you maybe didn't build for enough room, then this way you can allow for it. Uh, but again, you're future proofing, so make everything big, prepare for the worst. Now this scenario here is just a different way to build your conveyor systems to where they're more in the air than they are on the ground. It's just pretty, but it's a pain in the butt to do. Uh, how you do it is you find roughly where the thing's going to need to go, and then you just build it vertically until you get to the one that you need. Then this one's going to pop out, or come up, try to line it up, then have the conveyor go in, and then you're good to go. And then you do the same thing on the opposite end. You build one belt from there to the other one, and then as you expand these out more and more and more and more, you can just add these wherever you need to on the thing. So it's just a real easy step to add it. So back to this. Um, what's going to end up happening here is these uh, belts are going to come out, hit the merger, come over here. It's added another merger just for that. And then it's going to hit the splitter. Now, this splitter is really important because what it's going to feed is a quick access box. You're going to want this somewhere by the front of your base that you're primarily going to pass by. So then this way you have these quick access boxes because you're going to regularly run out of stuff. And instead of being on the ground floor, being like, oh, what floor do I have my iron rods on? Third floor, uh, to run all the way up to the third floor and you just hate yourself. But if you set this up ahead of time, you know, you go away, you start building another base. A couple hours later, you come back and you need iron. It's all waiting for you at the bottom of your base. Run up, grab whatever you need, run away. It's, it's very, very, very convenient. Uh, that's why I think this is really important. But if for whatever reason you really want to prioritize getting all of your plates um, like onto their like you know, mission objective to whatever they need to be used for, you just build a short little belt and then you can just delete it like this. And then I'll, everything's going to go through. And then once you get a logic splitter, then you don't have to worry about it. Then as soon as it hits the overflow factor, it'll send over. So hopefully this all makes sense in regards to future proofing your base. You create enough room to be able to build a bunch of constructors to be used up above. Now on the next floor, I kept it empty just because I didn't want to rebuild the exact same thing up here. So what's happening up, what's going to happen up here is going to be the same thing that's going to happen down here, except for up here it's going to be iron rods. So you just do the exact same thing. You put a splitter, you put a bunch of constructors, you put another splitter, you put a bunch of constructors, and then you have it merge all over here, come together, and it's going to shoot up to the next floor. And then the next floor would be screws. So then it would come from here, all your rods would go up to the next floor, and if, and if you want to keep it consistent, like for example, if you want this to be the incoming, then you can have your um, merger go this way rather than, you know, that way, heading towards this direction. So you want it to head this direction, and then you can build a vertical conveyor this way to feed the constructors. That's just depending on how nitty gritty you want to get. Let me see. So what else is there? So yeah, so then it's just verticality. That That's just the thing. You just keep building up and up. And then whatever the next floor is, don't have anything share a floor. Have one floor dedicated to one thing. Even if it's like two constructors on that floor and every other floor is like 27 constructors, who gives a shit? Leave it alone. Leave the two constructors there. Have it be clean. Have it be organized. Have it be more manageable. Um, I think this is an important thing. Because it's, it's, again, a future-proofing thing where you build your platforms four high. Now, why four high? Is because four high in the top row, it allows you to build above your constructors. I don't have room for it. But um, it allows you to be able to build above your constructors. So let's say you're you know trying to build, um, what are they called? Encased industrial beams. You know, you have iron and steel over here but then you have concrete over here and instead of running it all the way around your base you can just build a vertical thing to go right across the top of your base over to your constructors or I guess realistically at that point it'll be assemblers and um, hopefully that makes sense in regards to four high this is just I did this for an example of you know if, if you build something along the ends of your base that you kind of just want it to look cool then having the conveyor at the edge of your base might not be the best 
scenario because then you won't be able to build something like that to make your base look a little cooler. Um, so hopefully that all makes sense in regards to future proofing. You can also build this type of staircase later on once you you know have it. Again, I messed this up. This is not supposed to go here. It's supposed to start one out, offset one out, and then the next one is supposed to offset one more out from that. And then that way you keep going up and up and up and up, staying away from the inside here because it'll prevent you from doing vertical risers when you need one in a pinch. So the final tip I would give for future proofing is, uh, for example, I came here to build my power plant and I pretty regularly ran out of like, you know, iron rods and iron plates and cop, uh, you know, uh, cables and just that kind of stuff. And it was mind numbingly frustrating. And I'd always have to, you know, run all the way back to base or get in my truck and run all the way back to base. And I hated it. So what you want to do when you go to a new area and you decide I'm building something here, first build just some mini bases, something for concrete, something for iron plates, something for iron rods, something for copper wire, something for um, copper cables, just a small little base. It might take you like an hour total to build it all up, but boy, is it important because it's going to save you so much time for needing to go back and forth, back and forth. Um, that would be just my recommendation to doing that. It's like I said, it's just convenient. You don't have to, obviously. Um, you have to drag power poles out there to feed it all, but that's going to be a factor no matter what, so something to consider. Um, yeah, guys, so hopefully that all makes sense in regards to future proofing. Um, you always want to have enough room to be able to build out uh, or just plan to make a big platform to build, you know, have more constructors than you could, like, ever imagine needing, you know, doing some math and figuring it out. All right, guys, well, if you have any questions, uh, leave, them, leave them in the comment section, and yeah, I'll do what I can to answer them as best as I can. Thanks. Have a good one.